Okay, this is an instructional video um, teaching students how to take a base 10 number and repackage it so that it is represented in another base. This video specifically focuses on a base 3. Okay, so to start, it's very important that you start concretely. Um, this is a, you know, a video using the blocks interactively on an interactive whiteboard. However, you know, there, there are always the actual blocks themselves. Like I said, like I mentioned in previous lessons, you can cut the styrofoam base 10 blocks to create base 3 blocks. You can print out base 3 blocks um, from many different websites and you can actually have the students manipulate those. Um, and that's, that's very important that they actually engage in the act of trading in this process. So I have a place value chart to, um, to help us with this process um, right here is the base 10 number that is not efficiently packaged. It's some amount of ones that we haven't counted yet. And then over here, I have the more efficient package sizes. I have a 27, um, a 9, a 3, and a 1. And that, those coincide with my place value. So this is the 1's place, the 3's place, in which it's a rod. There, there's three ones within. This is the 9's place, 9 ones are within. And this is the 27's place, 27 ones are within. So. Um, what we're going to start with is this big old pile of ones. How many ones are there? So first we're going to have to count them out. So let's see how many we have. Um, arrange them into array to see. Okay, so we have that's 6, um, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So why don't we do a 5 by 3 with some extras. Okay, so um, we have 17 in base 10 in order to repackage. It will still be 17 ones when we get it into base 3, but the actual number with the digits and the place values will be different. Um, so when we look at this, we have to decide, are there better, more efficient packages to place these ones within? So we have 17 ones at this point. Can we use a 27s block? Can we trade out some amount of ones, the equivalent of 27? Well, no, we don't have enough. Okay, so we have to go to the next largest package. Um, it's important to fill packages before you move on to other sizes. So it's, it's important to start with the largest packages, fill them as much as possible, and if needed, go on to the smaller packages. So it seems as though we are able to, um, with 17, we'll have enough to trade for 9. So I'm going to take 9 out of here. There's our 9 that I will more efficiently package with a 9 block right here. So at this point, we have one 9, one 9 block, or um, 9 ones. So it's still the equivalent, but our packaging is more efficient. We're left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 ones. Um, not enough to trade for another 9's block, but we can use our 3's rods. So how many? Let's see. Here is one threes block that we can trade. So at this point we have one threes block or three ones. So again, equivalent, different package. And it looks as though we can package another rod. So here we go, we're going to package another one. Meaning now we have two threes or six ones. And we're left over with these two. It's not enough to package for a threes rod, so we're just going to have to put them in the ones place. What this says to us is that we have 127, we have two threes, and two ones, meaning that our number in base three is one, two, two. If we were to break these apart again, we'd still find 17. I mean, we can count them right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. The packaging is different. We have one 9, a 1 in the 9's place, a 2 in the 3's place, and a 2 in the 1's place. And that's equivalent to 17 in base 10. So actually manipulating, actually doing the trading out in this first phase is extremely important. Now we can move on to a more abstract phase. So take a look at this problem. We're still in base 3, but we're trying to package 50, um, 50 ones. So we have our place value charts still. Um, I have also, you know, scaffolded a bit away from extremely concrete and given them this, this empty, um, this equation, 50 base 10 is equivalent to something in base 3, and we're going to find out what. 
So let's start with the large packages. How many 27s can we trade out for the amount of ones that we actually have? Let's, well, definitely at least one. Let's try two. Oh, 27 twice, or two 27s will bring us to 54. So we do not have enough to trade our ones for two 27s. We only have enough to trade for one, which leaves us that digit in the, one, in the 27s place leaves us with a value of 27 ones in this place. All right, let's see. So after we have packaged a, a, a 27, I'm going to do a subtraction problem. I'm going to take away 27 from 50 to find how much left I still have left to package. I have 23 to package. And let's see, how many nines can I get fit into these 23 ones? Well, 3 is too much over, so it's got to be 2. Um, and at that 2 in the 9's place is equivalent to 18 1's. It's 2 9's, 18 1's. So at this point, we had 23. We packaged 18 of it. So another subtraction problem will lead me to how much is left. If I take away 18 from the 23 that I was left with after the first step, so 23 minus 18, I have 5 left to package. So moving down to the next most efficient package size is 3. And I have 5 left to package. So Let's see, I can trade out three of that five to give myself a rod, a singular rod. So I've then packaged three. That digit one in the threes place is worth three ones. And now I only have two ones left to package. So that would they would go in my ones place and be worth two ones together. Now, if we're right, we can add up all of these partial sums and get a 50 because that would be then equivalent to that base 10, um, 50 ones. So let's just check 27 plus 18 plus 3 plus 2 is 50. So we were right. The number then that's equivalent is the number within the place value system. Um, that chart is very helpful in, in that sense. So what we're left with is 1, 2, 1, 2 in base 3. So 50 in base 10 is equivalent to 1, 2, 1, 2 in base 3. So moving from concrete to abstract is crucial. Um, students do experience success with this um, because they, you know, they use their knowledge of multiplication facts and division to see, well, okay, so how many, how many nine or how many nines can fit and how much I have left to package? How many 27s can fit in 50? And then they're working also with remainders. So they're using some background skills and strengthening them along the way.